we're here at 993 Fifth Avenue. This is one of the most iconic Emory Roth buildings built in the Roaring Twenties. We have an unparalleled, never before seen opportunity to purchase a duplex penthouse overlooking the Met Museum. We've invited my friend Lee Stahl with TRH New York to debunk quite a few myths about what it will take to make this home your very own. Thanks for having me. Of course. This place is insane. Have you been outside? Uh, have I been outside? Uh, right. It's my favorite part. And you got the weather for the shoot and everything. We so. did. So let's talk about the architecture and let's talk about the construction. So this is a room I wouldn't spend $100,000 on. It doesn't need it. The moldings that exist, the style of the moldings are fantastic. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change them to plaster molding so there's no cracks later on. You're on Fifth Avenue, let the streets settle, no problems at all. But maybe I'm adding panel moldings on the walls. I'm not changing the floors. The floors are in great shape. If you want to gut it, you can. I don't think you need to gut this. I think that's the critical path to this apartment. I'm changing the mantle. The windows are fantastic. And quite frankly, you can't create the views. So what are you doing? Light the room, get the moldings, get the architecture, get it done. And that makes this a fantastic room. Just brought up the speed. I love that. Let's go inside. OK. So this is another one of my favorite rooms, the dining room. Because you can land the plane in it, it's so big. I mean, it's really large. Yes. And so I guess my very first question would be, what would it take, fiscally speaking, to bring this up to the 21st century? Probably not anywhere near as much people would think. What would I do here? First thing is I would leave the floors. I'd refinish the floors. They're in great shape. The borders are terrific. I'm changing the base. I'm getting rid of the chair rail. I'm putting panel molding on the walls. If the crown molding is wood, I'm changing it to plaster. Same reason as the living room. I don't want to entertain cracks later on. I'm getting rid of the fluted pilasters. Maybe I'm raising door heights, but that's where people get in trouble and it starts to create a domino effect. If I raise this, I raise that. And then all of a sudden you're spending money that you don't need to spend and you're throwing out mahogany doors. So in this project, it's a facelift in my world, right? I don't want to gut this apartment. I don't want to move the kitchen to where the living room is because it's not going to happen. No one's going to approve it. And it's a great layout for a kitchen. So I think that's a lot of confusion these days, at least on the, on the real estate agent side. We hear people coming in and they, I need to gut this. This is a gut job right. because they see some wallpaper that's crackling right. or what have you. But if you do look at the floors and you look, as you mentioned, at the moldings, which are so pretty, but sure. you'll change them out to make sure that they last through the test of time. Right. I think that there's so much confusion, Lee, as to whether this project of this duplex would cost $5 million mm -hmm. or $10 million. It's much closer to five than 10. Real estate being what it is these days, there's one question everybody wants me to answer. How much and how long? So a project like this is probably four to five million dollars of a massive facelift. Again, I'm not trying to make this the master bathroom. It's not gonna happen. The building's not gonna let you do that. So if I'm gonna engineer that budget, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick and choose my fights and make sure I get massive value throughout that entire budget. I'm not going to spend a million dollars in a living room and do cabinet refacing in a kitchen. Then people get stuck, they don't even finish well, their then they don't, kitchen. Then they, right, then this their project runs out of money. That's exactly. exactly right. Or the budgets skyrocket and they escalate. So the key with us is establish a real budget, then stick to it. It's not brain surgery, but so few people can but do Lee, that. But Lee, how long will this take? So from the time I put a mouse to AutoCAD till the time somebody moves into this apartment, with procurement of building permits, I could probably have them living here in about 18 months, half of what you just said. It's not a two or three year job. And in all honesty, if people are here working for two and three years, nobody's making any money and the clients are not pleased. And it's a long haul for the people right below us. It's a long <laughs> haul for the people happy. right below us and the people who are buying this have to find a place to live for three years and nobody wants to do exactly. that. Exactly. Right. That's right. exactly right. Right. You want to go into the gallery? Yeah, I would love to. Let's go. We're here in the foyer, and this is your entrance into the house. The Grand Gallery. Yes. Right. So I love like making an entrance count. 
You have a st you have a duplex, right? <laughs> Would you keep all of this ornate staircase and um, the banister? No, or? in my budget, I would take this banister out and change the banister. I would change the floor. I would change the moldings. I would change the white marble steps to a wood step. I might do a new marble floor here, but I'd bring this up to the 21st century, like you said. I'd get rid of this door completely. I'd make it a jib door, make it go away, keep it hidden. Same thing with that door, actually. Just get rid of all the doorways in here, clean it up, and this would be fantastic. And I'm not relocating the stair, so that's why I'm not gutting it. Okay, I like it. Cool. And now we're into kitchen, butler's pantry, laundry, breakfast room, staff room, bathroom. I mean, the square footage here is tremendous. Tremendous. First thing that's wrong, this door's hidden, is hinged the wrong way. Okay. This door should open this way because this is gonna be my butler's pantry okay. here. I have my butler's pantry off the dining room. I have a second butler's pantry with water already in place. So I'm gonna use this. So now I've got two butler's pantries, haven't even gotten to the kitchen yet. Let's go to the kitchen. So we're in the kitchen and I love this kitchen. I have gotten feedback that we should potentially take this far wall down, which would allow the breakfast room to be part of the entire kitchen, which is enormous. As long as I've got nothing in here, I'd knock it down in five seconds. And you I have agree. Eastern light. It, the light would be tremendous. Into this room. The island could get bigger. The breakfast room is now part of the room. This is the easiest thing in the world to do. If there's nothing in this wall, it'll come down in a half an hour. We are on the top floor of this duplex. And what I love most about this room is this could be one of your two options for a primary suite. We're overlooking Central Park and you get gorgeous corner light from both south and west exposure, just like we saw downstairs in the great room. Lee, <laughs> you know what's coming next. The view. What would you do for the changes? I wouldn't change in here. the view. The view is ridiculous. The I view mean, is the fantastic. View is amazing. Change the moldings, get rid of the millwork, rebuild really consequential storage. This doesn't owe anybody anything. It's been here for long enough. Redo the detailing, redo the panel molding. But aside from that, this room only has one light fixture in it. So what this room is going to need when the sun goes down is light. So I'm going to put really low profile recessed lights in here in addition to a consequential fixture and it's going to change the dynamic of this whole room because the sun goes down at some point. Of course. Right. Oh, I love this. Yeah. I, it's going to look great. Show me the other primary. Okay. So this is definitely what other people would consider to be a primary. Well, the light, the views, the light. There's a bathroom back in there. Yes. which is fantastic. But I mean, you've got private terraces, all this light, all this ceiling height. Again, you need some light in this after 5 p.m. So I need some low profile lighting in here. I need a great fixture in here. The moldings have had their day. Yeah. But change them, big deal. It's not a gut. That's what people have to understand. Change the fireplace. Yeah. But it's not a gut. I'm so happy to hear this. It's not. There's no reason. You're not going to move this master bathroom or this primary bathroom or whatever bathroom this is potentially going to be, and you're not going to move it halfway across the apartment. It's not a gut. So I could say this all day. There are things we see all day long that are guts. You mm -hmm. and I both know that. Mm -hmm. This just, an, is, this yeah, just this is, is not one of them. so grand. And right. so it's just like has to be, we have to keep the grand capacity of it, but we have to bring it into the modern day. Absolutely. Look at all the valances that were created, whoever decided to build this. So I want curtains. I don't want wood valances throughout the whole thing. It's going to raise the ceiling heights up. It's just going to make it more grand, get more light in here. And we have a huge terrace. Right. I mean, I would be calling this my breakfast terrace. Yeah. And overlook all the way through to the East River. Totally. But I think that's why it's so confusing as to which would be actually your preferred primary. Because right. this is tucked away in it. But it's so grand. It's great. It's terrific. I mean, 7 o'clock in the morning, the light's just pouring yeah. in here. So it's fantastic. Can we pop into this bathroom? Because it's so unique. Let's go. Lee, can I keep any of this ornate Parisian vibe, or is this too crazy? I'd be recreating it. I don't need okay. the gold leaf on it anymore. Right. It's got a little too much going on in here. If it just got calmed down a little bit, but again, it's not a big expense, then it's going to change the whole dynamic, and it's really going to bring this thing up to 
you know, 2024. Yeah. Can Would you put a little bit of a larger tub as well? I'd probably put a larger tub in here. The vanity is a little bit goofy because you have all this space and only, and one, only sink. one sink. Right. So you want a double sink. These are easy things to change. And then they have some very unique storage here, which is like... What's in there? It's really interesting. It's drawers, I think, for accessories. I was trying to figure it out. Sure. So, I mean... So another thing that's somewhat worth considering is you could take this doorway. You could offset this doorway just a little bit. If the doorway were over here, you could put a stall shower in here. Oh, interesting. Or you could put a tub in here and put a monster shower in there with your double vanity. Oh, in I here. love that. You get the footprint. It's all Just by changing the, the Just frame. by taking this doorway and shifting it down a little Perfect. bit. Perfect. Yeah. Because this bed gets lost. Yeah. Oh, this is great. What a simple fix. Yep. Well, that was fun. That was great. We got to debunk all the myths, including that this would be a three to four year project. What else did we hear? $10 million right, to so renovate. Right, it's not $10 million, it's not three to four years. It's a great opportunity. It's I mean, a, allegedly half the time, half the cost, correct. maybe even less. Right. And I'm just so grateful that you came to join us. Thanks for having me. Over it's always this. the same. Walking around the Upper We're East Side. We're shaking hands. Absolutely. <laughs> Lee, thanks again. Thanks for having me. And really, it's a great opportunity for the right people to get into this and know that in two years or less, they're going to be living here. Um, let's go find a buyer. Come visit us. See you. 993 Fifth.